I want to thank uh, all the men that were at men's breakfast yesterday, and especially those that served and then cleaning up afterwards and made short work of it. So thank you very much, men. I want to encourage all the ladies of the church to be here Saturday for Girls Morning Out. It's not only for yourself to be built up, uh, but it's to build up relationships within the body of Christ. Uh, so Pastor Deb will be back then. Uh, Bill and Deb are in Texas right now seeing relatives. Uh, and so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today. We thank you for the Spirit of God. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that how great God is because of you. Uh, Lord, bless this church today, the other three churches in the building, the school. Let this truly be a house of God in your holy name. Minister to each and every person today by your Holy Spirit, your greatness, your goodness, your personalness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I want to say, Dave, glad to have you here. I thought you might be out in a tree stand looking for deer. Ethan is. He texted me this morning. Uh, but anyway, you two have to get together and talk next time he's here. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I just want to stop there instead of continue. Prayer and supplication, let your thanksgiving be made known to God in all things. And I'm going to throw out some all things that you can stop and reflect as I say them. You'll say, oh, I, yes, that was true in my life. Oh, yes, when I gave it to the Lord, yes, I was thankful. Uh, or I was thankful and entered that. And I'm glad I was thankful because I saw God was in control. So of all days this week is Thanksgiving. We can be thankful, grateful, and uh, be faithful, grateful, and thankful in all things to God the Father. D.L. Moody said, be humble or you stumble. Be humble or you stumble. When we give thanksgiving to God, we're acknowledging Him as greater than us. And so that, in that alone is humility. Another quote, gratitude is riches, complaint is poverty. So be thankful shows God that you are grateful. If you are faithful and being grateful, you will be thankful. And I want to talk about those three truths. And I want you to think about this as I walk through this list. Whoever is faithful is grateful and thankful. Will be given more or he or she will, and he or she will have abundance. Whoever is not faithful, grateful, or thankful, even what he or she has will be taken from him or her. That's the Matthew 13 principle. So what you have when you're thankful multiplies. If you're not thankful, it can decrease in your life. Now, Thanksgiving, especially at this time of the year, puts God in every situation. Faithful, grateful, and thankful unlocks the fullness of life. <coughs> it turns what we have into enough and even more. It turns denial into acceptance. Now I want you to think, these situations, you have Christ with you and you'll have the truth of it, the blessing of it, or you don't see Christ and you miss the blessing. And the blessing comes by when you realize Christ is in every situation and you're thankful to Him, you're telling Him so, then that unlocks His presence, His understanding in your life. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion to clarity, it can turn a meal into a feast. You can be sitting down having a meal and then you start thanking God for the meal and everyone that's there and all of a sudden you have this feast. It can turn a house into a home. It can turn a stranger into a friend by just being thankful. 
My wife has this habit of calling everybody her friend. Well, that's my friend from the Y. That's my friend from uh, when we have coffee. That's my friend. And as soon as she says, that's my friend, uh, I hear the name. I don't know the person at all. Uh, That's my friend from. All of a sudden, that person becomes a good person. Uh, Just because Kathy is thankful for that person and says, that friend, of she's a friend of mine. And so when we bring Christ into a relationship and realize that we're befriending others, that brings Christ in the relationship whether we're talking about Him or not. Likewise, it turns problems into gifts because you realize why God allowed it. It turns failures into success, the unexpected into perfect timing. You realize God was there. Mistakes into important events. It can turn the existence of daily life into a life that is full. The disconnected situations into important and beneficial lessons. When I look at failures into success, I think about a family that used to be here that worked at the experiment station, and and the experiment station's working with plants, and, and it takes generations to develop these things. And I say, well, what do you do about all those hours and days and years that nothing happened? He said, oh, it did happen. It was negative research. And I've thought about that, negative research. And so how many times in our life we think, oh, failure, failure, and then all of a sudden you realize, no, wait a minute, negative research, that doesn't work. I tried it. That was a situation. But now I know how, and you're thankful for God for showing you that understanding. Faithful, grateful, and thankful makes sense of our past and brings peace for today. It creates a vision for tomorrow. Your past is a memory. Tomorrow's a vision, but today is an experience, especially this week of Thanksgiving. Make today an experience of faithful, grateful, and thankful with God. It's a good week to practice everything, everything. Try it. Well, you say, well, what if it's something in my life I don't like? Thank you, God anyway, because He's still there. You might not see Him, you might not hear Him, but He's still there. And at the end of the week, you'll be able to look back and say, you know, I was, I was faithful to God because He's faithful to me. And so I'm grateful that He took me through this last week. And now I'm thankful that He was walking with me each and every day. I want you to thank Jesus for this week. Thank Jesus. Again, a message I have coming up. Uh, the subtitle is, How Much Jesus Are You? How much Jesus are you? Not only what you think and understand it to be, that's good, but how much Jesus do other people see in you? And it doesn't mean you're quoting Scripture and all that. It doesn't mean a religious thing. That's just the way you are. That's who you are. You're just that person that Christ has made. And so others can say, because you bring His name up, how much Jesus you are. And let others be a testimony. Let others be a witness of how much of Jesus you are. So faithful, grateful, thankful is seen in humility. See, humility means understanding that the depth, the delights, the pains, the needs of others are just as important as our own, even though we don't feel them. My wife and I were praying for the four families that lost their uh, four uh, college students that were stabbed to death this week, and, and, and the shock of that, two of them have been friends since kindergarten, uh, and it shows pictures of them, all four of these are together. They're just happy young people, smart, intelligent, they're, they got their whole wor- life in front of them, and somebody comes in during the night and stabs them all to death. And so driving in, we were saying what we're thankful for, and we started praying for those four, the parents of those four children. We can't imagine what they're going through. And it's Thanksgiving, and stop and think, what are they going to be thankful for this coming Thursday on Thanksgiving? That's going to be hard. Keep those four families in prayer. We need to keep them in prayer. And so we understand, and I'm reminded, when we are humble, we can laugh at our self-importance and sometimes even set it aside. 
Whenever I need to be reminded, actually, I don't want to be reminded, but the Lord drops it into my mind, uh, every now and then about, uh, maybe I'll just take the humble road. You know, take the, they, they say, take the high road, right? Uh, and so uh, <clears throat> there's somebody in our neighborhood who let their dog go and attacked our dog and attacked my wife and put along scratches down her arm and hurt our little dog and her dog's limped around for a couple of days. And, and, and the man who allowed his dog to go free, uh, he just walk, gets up and walks in the house, the dog chase, and it doesn't say he's th- he doesn't say, I'm sorry, can I help, or anything. Well, of course, that doesn't sit well with my wife, that's to say the least. And so uh, then uh, I see the, owner, the wife of that man uh, walking the dog. It, it's a hunting dog. Why you have a hunting dog in-house and not take him out for exercise is beyond me. But anyway, so I see her on the road, and so I pull over and stop and go out and meet her and tell her who I am, and that's my wife, that, you know. Uh, and so... Uh, <clears throat> That didn't go so well, but it was better than I thought. Well, then anyway, I'm taking the high road. You know, I'm humbling myself. No, I didn't use that term. I didn't even think about that until this message. But then I see them coming at Tim Hortons, and Kathy and I are coming out, and and we're with uh, others from the church. And uh, and so she come, the woman comes in. I've already talked with her. And I said, how, how you doing? Oh, great. Okay, good. And here he comes. And, and there's nobody between me and him. He's in the parking lot. I'm going to catch him in the center of the parking. I got this set up just like this. Okay, got you. And so I walk over and I said, hello, I'm Mark Hammer, and I, it's my wife who had the issue with your dog. Uh, and I said, I just want to make sure, you know, there's no problem here. And, you know, we're neighbors. And he said, oh, and I got my hand out. I made him shake hands. <laughs> I wrote, yeah, right. <clears throat> and uh, so he's shaking hands and he says, uh, we'll get along fine. We'll just keep it at a distance. And, and he keeps right on walking. And he pats me on the back like, there, little boy, you know. And I thought, that's okay. I made you shake hands. That's okay. I cleared the air as far as I'm concerned. So I see them now. I wave at them. But I cleared the air. And, and see, we can humble ourselves. I, I didn't have, I could have gone over and said, hey, you realize I could have had your dog put away for 10 days? Do you realize you scratched, you know, did you realize it hurt? I could have taken, no, I just say, hey, I want everything clear. Okay, so I was thinking about that. But when I generally think about being humbled, you know, I served a hospice chaplain for 21 years and helped a lot of people. And all of a sudden, uh, the, another company bought Lifetime, uh, uh, you know, uh, Rochester uh, Regional bought Lifetime. And everything changed. Computer changed and, and the phone changed and all the red tape. And, and it's real confusing. And uh, then COVID hits. And, uh, and I think, you know, I've, 21 years, I've had enough. And, and, and one morning, I'm just sitting there at my office uh, in Rochester. And I said, no, I quit. I've, ha- I've had enough. And, and so I, I take all my stuff and set it, you know. And, and uh, so they make this announcement. Everybody take your, your possessions, your business, and go home. The building's going to be locked up. COVID hit. And we don't know what it is, but everything stopped. Today, is, you're not going to get in after today at 3 o'clock or 11 o'clock. So I thought, oh, that's good timing. I just quit. And now, and so I left everything. I didn't even turn it in. I just left it all on my desk. And, and I go out and uh, uh, I, I thought, oh, I forgot something. And, and, and the badges don't work. 11 o'clock, nothing works. It is locked up. And what they said when I was thinking about retiring a couple of weeks earlier, uh, they said, well, you know, we want to have something for you in the lunchroom. Uh, we generally have bagels and and sandwiches and to tell you goodbye and we you know I said look I don't want all that I just when I decide because you know it was getting iffy with all this change uh, when I decide just you know leave me alone and uh, okay and so anyway I'm I'm now I'm locked out nobody's there I'm you know I'm one of the last ones out of the building uh, and I can't get back in uh, <clears throat> and so I gave my card to somebody else and who who uh, was going to go in later that day. And it's like, now this is humility. This is being humbled, okay? Um, uh, you know, I looked at my office before I left because I didn't take anything. I took my to shake it. I didn't, I didn't make it my home. But my, off, my office is here in church. That's where I get my, uh, you know, my, my satisfaction. And so I just have my to shake case. But I'm, now I'm locked out of the building. Everybody's locked out of the building. And you know what I thought? I didn't even get a bagel. You think you're important? I didn't even, 21 years, 
calling me 24-7. I remember he calls 11.30 at night driving up to say a prayer for somebody who just died and the family won't let him go until the chaplain comes and gives a prayer. And you're getting back home at 3 in the morning and I didn't even get a bagel. But I know I got a lot of souls saved and I thought, walking to my car, I thought, I, did, I, thought, I don't need a bagel. <laughs> you know, my attache case with no bagel. So we can see our own faults and strengths and the faults and strengths of others, and we recognize how much we have been given, earned and unearned. How much have you been given that's unearned? See, humility opens us up to grow in the love of God. Humility opens us up to God and to remember that only what is done for Christ lasts. See, humble people generally don't know they're humble. And we have a humble church, and I've thought about that a lot this week. A church full of humble people. And while I was thanking God for everyone in this church the past week, I was constantly seeing the humility that's displayed, and not only by what we see, but what's done and said by so many different people helping and serving and giving uh, that nobody knows about except God. And God sees what you're doing. Uh, how about all the phone calls of encouragement or food taken to people that need help or the sacrificial giving? Acts of kindness, thoughtfulness, considerate of others. That is a humble people that do that sort of thing. And that's just what I've heard about, not saying everything that has happened in the church that I don't know about. And so what I watched yesterday, I watched the men preparing breakfast and talking and then afterwards all cleaning up. That's being humble. And you don't think of yourself as being humble. You say, well, it's a job. I need to do it. Yeah, but humble people will do it. Prideful people won't do it. And then I think about leaders line and the decisions being made uh, with humility about others uh, and what's going to happen in this church and what is happening. See, I thought, well, I'm watching. I'm watching spiritual people and they don't even know it as I saw the people this week. See, I'm watching humble people, and they don't even know it. I'm also watching people that are pleasing the Lord. I thought, I'm watching them, and God is watching us. God is watching our church, and He's watching humble people living the way Christ wants them to. See, there's three principles of life. God loves faithfulness, gratefulness, and thankfulness. God loves unity of humble people. The faithfulness, gratefulness, and thanksgiving can be taught and practiced. And what a week to teach faithful, grateful thanksgiving to each other and to our families. The Thanksgiving dinner, when you cut in, right before you cut into that turkey or that ham or whatever you're having, stop and think. <coughs> about everything you're thankful for. We bought some Thanksgiving plates a couple years ago. They got turkeys on them and, you know, they, they kind of all this color and, and we bring them out only at Thanksgiving. Uh, and I'm thankful for those plates. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, gravy on, potato, on mashed potatoes. I'm thankful for stuffing. I'm thankful for all that that you don't normally all put all together at one time, except at Thanksgiving or Christmas maybe. Uh, but it's thank, and, and you just stop and say, God, Thank you. Thank you for whatever you might be eating this Thanksgiving. Make a list of it ahead of time and then start watching. You say, oh yeah, I'm thankful for that and for that and for that. Uh, I'm thankful when you're with your loved ones at Thanksgiving or you think about calling them if they're not around. Stop and take time and tell your family, stop. Before we eat, I want to tell you, I'm thankful for every one of you. And maybe tell them why you're thankful. Have, have the thing that comes to your mind the most. You know, I'm so thankful you're my son, you're my daughter. I'm so thankful that we're in this family. I'm thankful you're my husband or you're my wife. Or you call somebody, I'm thankful that you're my sister or my brother. But just think of the thanksgiving, all that we have in our life. There's a universal truth. Thanksgiving creates abundance. Remember that. Thanksgiving creates abundance. An abundance of thanksgiving and gratitude equal abundance in life. Complaining creates poverty, so are you willing to pay that price? But gratitude creates riches. 
Gratitude creates riches. When you're faithful, grateful, and thankful, and you walk into church, all of a sudden, everybody here is your brother and sister. All of a sudden, everybody here is your friend that we spoke about in Sunday school. Everybody here accepts you. You are accepted by everybody here. And that makes you faithful, grateful, and thankful. I was thinking about humble people. I was thinking about our church and things that were happening this week. Now, now let, me, <laughs> let me finish this sentence. Humble people aren't necessarily exciting people, but they're faithful people. And faithful is better than exciting. Now, the reason I thought about exciting, I've got a sermon coming up. I've already written about uh, elation with God and, and going from, th- from, from happy, from uh, thankful and happy to uh, el- uh, joy and elated. Uh, there's, there's steps there. But anyway. And so I was thinking about the definition of elation. And, and elation and excitement doesn't come very often. But when we think about humble people that are faithful and are consistent, that's preferred over, and, and they also experience exciting times. And humble people are faithful and consistent. Now listen. Uh, This came to me. (coughs) Exciting is a sprint. Faithful is a marathon. Exciting is, I I love excitement. I live for excitement. You know that. I mean, if it, you know, from one excitement to the rest, I'm wondering, did God forget me? It's like, those are great fun times. But faithful, that, that's a sprint. It'll happen, and it'll happen short, and it's over, and you can remember it and reflect on it and wait, wait for the next. But faithful is a marathon. Humility is a marathon. I thought about you, Mark Reese, this morning because Mark just ran another marathon. And Mark, you need to give a teaching, and whether it's Sunday school or service, about running in life. You need to give a, a teach. I'm serious about, you know, how about your preparation or about life is a marathon? Uh, how about pre- prepar- And this is just Mark preparing and Mary. She runs marathons too. How about their preparation? And how about their running? How about falling out or twisting an ankle and being discouraged? Or how about winning? How, how do you feel, Mark, when you're at the starting line? How many thousands were at your last one? And, uh, you know, and it's like, where am I going? He knew what, how many seconds it was going to take to get there. He was in less than a minute off his run. How do you, how do you see? All that is preparation. So how do you start? And what's it feel like to see the starting, the finishing line? And what's it feel like to finish and having finished? How about crossing the line in the exhilaration or the excitement or the exhaustion? Uh, How about knowing that you accomplished the marathon? And that's what life is all about. And so I really, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, Mark, that, what, a, what, a, what a, an example of the Christian life, because the Christian life is a marathon. And so Thanksgiving is recognition, ultimately, of a debt that cannot be paid. Thanksgiving for Jesus Christ in our life, the debt of Jesus Christ on the cross, His sacrifice for each and every one of us here. Thankful for our forgiveness of sins. Thankful, thankful, thankful for acceptance by our holy God. Thankful, thankful, thankful for our families. Take time to thank your family and thank God for your family, especially this week, and thank God for our church. Thankful, thankful, thankful that you are in the body of Christ. I heard somebody this week, very religious, and someone had died in their family. They went to a funeral. And the minister, chaplain, priest, or whoever, uh, shared about asking Jesus, a, say a prayer, asking Jesus into your life. And she said, we never heard that. And they've been going to church forever. We never heard you can say, a, you can talk to Jesus, he'll come into your life. We never heard that. And she's looking at her husband. He never knew that. And now she's thinking, where is he now? And is he saved? Ethan, the Melchizedek, uh, we're going to have him up January 8th. He texted me this morning. He's in a a deer stand, you know, and and he's not paying attention to deer. 
he said to me, you know, I read this long text. I, what are you trying to get me saved? You know, you know yeah. and, and he's thinking about this and thinks about the fruit of God in people's lives and, and Christians, you know, they, uh, where's the fruit? If they're saved, they need the fruit. They need to be talking about Jesus, you know, and, and if they're not, if talk, where's the fruit? And then people make the excuse. Christians make the excuse. He says, uh, they say, well, well, their hearts are good. And it doesn't matter about their hearts or, or their heart. You know, and he goes on about being converted and having the fruit. And you got to, you know, he's like, hey, I, you know, he's getting all excited in the deer stand. <clears throat> and so uh, that man, he, see, have you said the prayer and asked Jesus into your life? Have, have you thought about him and said, Jesus, come into my life. I give you myself. A whole life. I'm yours. And he comes in and he just wipes away the sin and he gives us his righteousness and accepts us in a family of God. Once again, I was walking from where I parked the car in the back, walking up, and we have the new parking lot over here, and generally uh, almost halfway back, and then the old parking lot is covered, in, in just, they just painted it, okay? Uh, and I see that so, I said, if that's not the Christian life, you have some that are just transformed, made new, and then you got this that have been painted over with the blood of Christ. But under that paint in the back parking lot, is the deep, crest, the deep cracks and crevices and brokenness. And, and isn't that the body of Christ? Thank God for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, that forgives us, but we still have the scars. But that doesn't, we don't, scars aren't removed, they're just painted over with the blood of Christ. And Christ doesn't see them anymore. The Father doesn't see them because you've asked Jesus into your life. So God the Father sees you through the eyes of what His Son did for us on the cross. And so some of us, and Tim uh, Driscoll used to say this, uh, <clears throat> he said, I get to heaven, I don't want a, a shiny armor that I want it dented and busted up. and you know." He said, because I want to have fought the battle. And I thought, isn't that like the rest of the old, the old parking lot back there? You know, we fought the battle. Yeah, there's scars and there's hurts and there's this, and but Christ healing them, making us into the new before the very throne of God. And so people, this is Thanksgiving. It's a great time to bring up Jesus Christ. It's a great time to share with your family. You're thankful for them. But most of all, you're thankful for Jesus Christ. And then ask your family, ask your friends, are you thankful this week? Are you thankful for Jesus? Now, people say, well, I can't say that. Yes, you can. That's a lie. That's a lie. Well, I don't want to upset anybody. People, better you upset them on this side of eternity than God upsetting them on the other side. Are you thankful? How about thankful for what Jesus has done for you? One sentence. Say it in your head over and over. And, and so you get the opportunity to say it because we're thankful for Christ. Let's stand for prayer. Lord God, oh Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you that you love us so much. Lord, we do. We give our lives to you fresh and new right now, just right now. Lord, again, let us be more thankful today and all this week. Every time we see something about Thanksgiving, be it a turkey, be it a ham, be it whatever, we are thankful for our salvation. We're thankful for our families. We're thankful for this church. We are thankful for our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Give thanks for the good days. When the traffic lights all turn green, when promotions come and bad habits are broken. Give thanks for warm meals and the company of friends. Give thanks for undeniable blessings and clear direction. When the music floods your soul and the worship songs flow without effort. Give thanks for coffee and clothing and hope that the two never mix. Give thanks for the mother who battles daily in prayer, for the father working three jobs, for the brothers and sisters who build blanket forts and read bedtime stories. 
give thanks for sons and daughters and all our family who remind us of what truly matters. Give thanks for the stranger who holds the door open and the lifelong friend who holds you when life is broken. Give thanks for the hard days, for the phone call that brings life crashing down, for jobs lost and friendships fallen into conflict. Give thanks for the anger that reminds us we are human and the tears that express more than words could ever fathom. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, your energy spent, your spirit fallen, and your only option is to fall to your knees before your Holy Father and cry out, God, please help me. For in that moment, his power is made perfect. His love is made evident. He becomes your strength your comfort, and your salvation. Give thanks for the power of redemption, from Genesis to Revelation, for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his son than give up on his children. For nail-pierced hands, for brilliant dawns, for the cool touch of rain and the simplicity of a quiet day. For all things great and small, let us give thanks.